Uncle Augustine. What are you doing here? I had an appointment. An appointment? With whom? Every year on this day. I come up here at dawn. And I watch the stalks migrate. If only we could fly away with them. I wish you could. The Vandal army is growing restless. Almost no food is reaching us. They will choke the city until we have no choice. What are we going to do? It's no longer in our hands. all you have? Nothing's coming through. I'll take these. Sarah? Yes. to cut off our water. We have to take what's in that well or we will die. If we give in to panic, then the Vandal will win even before storming our gates. Panic and violence will take our lives faster than thirst or starvation. As your bishop and a citizen of Hippo, I can promise you there is hope. Put down your weapons. We're all going to die, Bishop. All hope is gone. No, Fulvius. There is still hope. Because there is still a chance to save our city. A chance I will guarantee. I will make sure the Vandals lay down their weapons. He says he can stop them. How can he say that? We're all gonna die! He's a good man. I know he's a good man. But he's How? Have faith. Hmm. Hmm. A peace agreement. You surprise me, Augustine. You should know Rome doesn't ask for peace. If anything, 
It offers it. Governor. Distinguished counselors, be reasonable. Since Guy Zerk and his vandals reached Africa, they already burned Tingis, Gartena, and Caesarea to the ground. Hippo will not fall. The Imperial fleet will save us. If they were coming, they would already be here, Governor. We're all tired of war, the vandals included. We should send our representative to go before Guy Zarek, and in the name of God, beseech him for peace. Governor! Governor! The soldiers have arrived. Roman soldiers. Centurion Fabius Demetius, at your command, Governor. You are welcome here. Which legion do you belong to? The Seventh. The Seventh? Mm. I thought it had been annihilated. It was defeated. The two centuries and I survived. We've been marching for days in enemy territory, escorting these civilians. We took advantage of the storm to pass the Vandal lines. Have you heard? These soldiers demonstrate that the siege can be ended. That the Vandals can be defeated. Let us not lose hope. Rome will prevail. Your obsession for a military victory will bring this city to ruin. Your presence here was the only thing that made me hesitate to come, Bishop Augustine. You know me? My father knew you. You are the son of Hilarius. Bishop Augustine, these people and I have marched through the desert with only one purpose, to put ourselves in your hands. Bring the wounded soldiers. How are the wounded? Better soon, I hope. You may only enter unarmed. Why? It's sacrilegious. Lucille, let them come in. The only things sacred here are the lives of these people, and their lives were saved by this sword. Where's Glabrius? Have they done anything for you? There is nothing to be done. Bring this man a doctor! Immediately! There's no need to yell. Fabius. What are you going to do? If you move over and get out of here, we're going to try and save his life. Fabius. Fabius. Bishop! Bishop! A message from Rome. The Pope wants you and your books to be taken to a safe place. 
How can that be possible? The Pope has already sent three ships. A few more days and they will be here. You mean I have to board a ship with my books and escape? To Rome, yes. And abandon my people? These are the Pope's orders. But I'm the bishop of this city. But this city doesn't deserve you. Haven't you seen what happened yesterday when they saw the soldiers coming in? The people came to the conclusion they didn't need you anymore. <laughs> need me. <sighs> Look, Basidius. This is your handwriting. But it's your confessions. Yes, my confession. Like any man left to my own devices. I would still be a, a poor, presumptuous boy. Sure, there is nothing I would need. If there is anything good about me, I have only my mother to thank. My mother, who bore me in flesh to this temporal life, and with her heart to eternal life. <laughs> Keep pushing. The baby is up too high. Go and call the father immediately and tell him to hurry. you to get ready. For what? You know. Do you know what you're asking of me? You will die. If you don't do it, both of us will die. Operate. I want my son to live. Do it. <laughs> Wait, I'm winning. She's dying. Padre nostro, che sei nei cieli, sia santificato il tuo nome, venga il tuo regno. Wait, I can feel him. Yeah. He's moving. He's moving. Monica. It's a boy, Patricia. It's a boy. It's a boy. So, what will you call him? Constantius. In honor of our emperor. No. Constantius is just one of many. I will call him Augustine. Little Augustus. Like the first emperor. Augustine, you scared me. Come on. These are facts, not words. But someone may ask, why do we have to pay taxes to Rome? You know, I come from a small town like this. And my father, was a strong, honest, hard-working father. 
like you are. I thought you said he came from a powerful family in Rome. Yes, he did. But now he's acting to win their favor. One of the coins he'd earned in a pot, saving it for taxes. I used to ask, why don't we spend these coins rather than giving them to Rome? And he used to answer patiently, my son, with those coins, all we could buy is a goat. Whereas Rome will build with it an empire. Rome doesn't want our money because we are Rome. These are facts, not words. I want to become like him. Like Macrobius, why? Did you hear him? He can convince people to do whatever he wants with his words. These are facts, not words. With the mouth you've got, it won't take you long to become like him. But I won't have a chance if I stay in this town. Where do you think you're going to get this big chance? In Carthage. I want to study with Macrobius. <laughs> Carthage? You're just a boy. Do you have any idea how much it costs to study with somebody like Macrobius? No. Do you? Yes. More than you could ever afford. Stop filling your head with these silly notions. But, Patricius, we could save up. Augustine deserves a school. Augustine will make do with the school in Tagaste, just like I did and my father before me. Discussion closed. Father, where are you going? To the tavern. That's not true. What are you insinuating? You've perfumed your hair. You never do that when you go to the tavern. Augustine, no. You're going to see Eurydice, your friend. How dare you! Don't ever speak to your father like that again. It's not fair. It's not fair. I know. It's not fair. Then why don't you say something to him? Words are not enough to change a man. That's a fact. And not only words. something which I already had in abundance. I had no intention of enjoying what I stole, but to enjoy the theft and the sin itself. I was being gratuitously wanton, with no other reason of being evil and then the evil doing itself. Such was my heart, a depraved soul seeking destruction. Here, mm. take it. I hope it's enough for the fruit you've lost. There's no need, madam. The fruit grows back year after year. But a child, if he goes astray, he can be lost forever. Why did you do it? Answer me, why did you do it? <coughs> you cause me pain, Augustine. Me? I cause you pain? Maybe you meant to say my father. My father causes you pain. He gambles all of our savings away, drinks like a fish, and he's been cheating on you for years. He causes you pain, not me. Enough, Augustine. Patricius is what he is. But you, you aren't like him. I'm not. I'm not like that. What do you want me to be? Devoted to your god? A perfect boy? No, not perfect. Just... If I stay here, I'll become exactly like my father.
You haven't only come here to taste my oil, to compliment me on my home, talk about my son. You're right, but I've come to talk to you about my son, Augustine. Is he still the smartest boy in his school? Oh, yes. But I want to help him to get away from here, to go to Carthage to study. He heard Macrobius. He has decided to be a lawyer. A lawyer? How would you pay for his studies? You know we can't. Remember when we were young? You were offered an opportunity to change your life. You couldn't have done it alone. Macrobius would make a great lawyer out of him. Go to work. Come on, this is not free day. Augustine, <laughs> here is a new tunic. <laughs> Wear this when you go to Macrobius and try not to get it dirty. Yes, Mother. And take this. Well, it's goat's this cheese. You cannot go there empty. I know. And please, please be careful. Carthage just like that. Don't drink too much. Yes, yes, yes. And watch out for the girls. I must go. <laughs> May God be with you, my son. God? All I need is myself. Woo! Bye! Bye! Good luck, my son. of the Lord which my mother had poured into my ears. None of them, however, sank into my heart, making me do anything. Her words only appeared to be womanish counsels, which I would have been ashamed to obey. And yet they were the Lord's, and I did not know. And in rejecting her counsel, I was rejecting the Lord. I'm looking for Liberius Prisco. I'm Valerius Prisco. My father's not at home. Close. M my name is Augustine. Romanianus has sent me. Romanianus from Tagaste. The one with the oil. And what does he hope to squeeze out of you? Come in. We were expecting you yesterday evening. Yes, I'm sorry, but I was detained. By a nice pair of hips? No, I don't usually travel on the public wagon. There was a delay. Public wagon? Hmm, never rode on one. Neither had I, until yesterday. Kalina! This will be your room. Thank you, Valerius. Kalida will be at your service. She's from the great deserts. Reliable people. Nice hips. A good way to be detained, hmm? What are you doing? Unfastening your sandals to wash the dust from your feet. There's no need to. I'll do it. Um, I'm sorry, you know. I've never had a personal servant before. You'll get used to it. I don't think so. Thank you. I never thank the servants or apologize to them. Otherwise, they won't respect you. Thank you. Side. You need to marshal your arguments logically. 
So, that's how it is. Simple as that. Macrobius? Yes? My name is Augustine. Romagnana sent me. Ah, you're the one who wants to become a lawyer, right? Yes. Tagaste, right? Exactly. Now, I do say, has anything good ever come out of Tagaste? <laughs> Listen, I don't have time for new students. But... I'll only take you on if you can prove you have enough talent to merit a teacher like myself. How? Well, uh, orators persuade people to do what they want, don't they? So persuade me to take you on as my student. Uh, Come on, I'm listening. I... I saw you... You haven't persuaded me. Go back to Tegaste, believe me. It's for your own good. to take you on as my student. Of course I will persuade you. I'll come back tomorrow. What do you think, that I'm scared? Stupid, stupid, stupid! Say it again. Try calling me stupid once more. No, no, uh, I was talking about myself. You don't understand. I don't understand? Yes, uh, I mean, no. Uh, I didn't mean... If you say I don't understand, then you think I'm stupid. No, I am. I'm the stupid one. Yes. <coughs> you are the stupid one. Stupid. Let's go. <laughs> Groups of young men assaulted the meekness of newcomers with their aggressiveness, <coughs> tormenting them with uncalled for jeers, gratifying their mischievous mirth. Nothing could more nearly resemble the actions of devils. Hey! <laughs> hey! Hey! Augustine! Augustine! <laughs> Augustine! <laughs> Yours is the best smart so far! <laughs> Don't joke about it! I was beaten up! <laughs> you should have let me show you around the city personally! <laughs> hey, don't worry, I know who will heal your wounds. Augustine! <laughs> Augustine! <laughs> I came to Carthage, where a cauldron of unholy loves was seething and bubbling all around me. You didn't make many conquests at the party last night. I'm not sure this place is for you, Augustine. Better if you go home. That way, Romanianus will understand that there is nothing of any value to squeeze out of you. What do you know? Your father's rich. You have everything. Huh. I have everything, huh? <laughs> My father's rich, right? Let me tell you something, Augustine. Something that no one outside this house knows. My father... doesn't exist. He died two years ago. He being dead, his business dealings would have come to an end. 
Without them, I would have come to an end. No more house, friends. Nothing. So I buried him in secret with my own hands. And I have carried on his affairs using his name. Make no mistake, no one has given me anything. I've taken everything I have. Do you understand, Augustine? If you want something, don't ask for it. Take it. Padre nostro, che sei nei cieli, sia fatta la tua volontà. Venga il tuo regno. Rimetti a noi i nostri debiti come noi rimettiamo a nostri debitori. Macrobius. Ah, the little boy from Tagaste, right? I saw you do something incredible in Tagaste. You made everyone delighted to pay taxes. And that's why my assemblies are so popular with governors. <laughs> you kept repeating, these are facts, not words. I figured out why. I asked myself, what, what does an orator like yourself have? Only words. A feeble weapon. So, how can you make it powerful? Simple. Make your listeners believe they're not only words. You reiterated, these are facts, not words. And slowly your words really became facts. Everything you said really became true. I can make a good lawyer out of you, but if you want to become a great orator, that depends on you. Do you know what the difference is between a great orator and an ordinary one? The talent. No. Courage. Why? You'll come to understand. Good. Then let's begin. Boiled eggs, anchovies, grilled red meat, and a large cup of goat's milk. Muscles. You have to get fit. An orator has to make the powerful sound of a horn. Not the feeble murmur of a flute. Come on. Demosthenes had a stammer, but he made himself speak for months with a stone in his mouth. And he became the greatest orator of his time. For there is nothing of greater importance. For there is nothing of greater importance. Breathing! An orator needs to know how to speak for hours while standing, accompanying his words with movements in his whole body, like an actor, like a dancer, like a soldier. Because you will be fighting a war in the tribunal, and only words can win that war. Now this is the great theatre, the stage where justice is performed. Yes. A performance that will make you the leading actor. Come on. Witnesses accuse my client, Getulius, of having attempted to murder his wife. Acquaintances have reported certain threats Getulius made against his wife. The prosecution maintains they have produced evidence which incriminates Getulius. Witnesses who accuse. Acquaintances who report. Prosecutors who maintain. So many words. How can I also expect you to listen to mine now? You've already been fed more than you could possibly digest. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's put all the words aside. 
Let's put them aside and listen only to our hearts. It is there. And not here, where the lawyers, the judges, and the accused are standing. It's there, in our hearts, that we distinguish truth from false, and words from facts. Do not listen to me. Listen to yourselves, and let's try to find the answer to these questions in our hearts. Has the weapon used in the attempted murder been found? No. These are facts, not words. Does the wife of the accused have any wounds which prove that somebody attempted to kill her? No. These are facts, not words. Does the accused have any criminal record for violent crimes that would support these accusations? No. These are facts, not words. You have been made to listen to many words. Instead of letting the voices of the witnesses, lawyers and judges resound in your hearts, let the only voice worthy of faith resound. The voice of the facts. My studies were aimed at the courts of law, where glory is proportionate to craftiness. By this time, I was among the best and was inflated with arrogance. I was eager to be eminent for the inane and deplorable purpose of delighting in human vanity. exuding itself forth, itching to be scratched by scraping on the things of the senses that would not inspire our love if they had no soul. To love and to be loved was even sweeter when I gained the enjoyment of the body of the person I loved. Thus I polluted the spring of friendship with the filth of lust. Augustine, what happened to you the other night? Oh, ask Chrissy there. She kidnapped me. I don't recall where she... Where she... Where she brought me. Next time, I'll kidnap you. You spilled all your wine on me. Can't you watch what you're doing? This is a new tuning. Excuse me. I got this in Rome. Hey, what's up? You. What's going on? Hey, you didn't tell me if you appreciated my closing speech, Valerius. As always, how many cases have you won now? Oh, I stopped counting them. <sighs> Carthage has become too small for your talent. You deserve to be on the biggest stage of Rome. Look at me. I'm all wet. You know, I'm not happy about this. So Augustine, tonight, of you of forgot course. this at my place. Oh, I planned on coming by again. <laughs> you keep it. I won't be wearing anything else when you come by. <laughs> promises, promises. Augustine, come in. Pour our young style drink. The taste of victory is the only one we never tire of. Especially in a case like this. What made this case so special? Mm. Mm. Making everyone believe that Getulius was innocent mm. has been mm, exhilarating. That's terrible. What about the truth? Truth? We have never been concerned with the truth. The only truth is the one that Augustine convinced the judge and the audience of today.
You are so quiet. I'm not used to such silence with you. At times, I don't know what to say. That's a shame. Why? I like to listen to you before I go to sleep. Kalida, tell me something. Do you think we can live without the truth? We can deny it. To others. And to ourselves, but... But? But the truth is strong. Good or bad, it doesn't leave us. It just lingers there. Hidden in our hearts. And what truth is hidden within yours? I can't offer you. And I'll never ask for anything. Finally, you slept with her. <laughs> she served you before me. I'm the master of the house, but now she feels that she belongs to you. <laughs> I don't want to possess her. She's the perfect woman. Beautiful, faithful, available. <laughs> and you know that she can never marry you. <laughs> Very nice to have around. I have one for every house. Antiochia, Ravenna, Milan. <clears throat> that way, no matter where I go, I always have a warm bed. Don't play so innocent. You know how to charm with your words. But deep down, you're no different than I. If you say so. <laughs> Augustine? Camillus, what are you doing here? Where's your father? Augustine! What's wrong? He's free. And it's your <laughs> fault! Fault? I only helped him prove his innocence. Oh, damn you. He wasn't innocent. My father was guilty. Guilty. And you know this. He did try to kill my mother. And now, he has succeeded. My mother is dead. And it's your fault. My mother is dead. 
By what steps I was dragged to the depths of hell, toiling from my lack of truth, even when I was seeking God through the eyes of flesh, and not through the understanding of the mind which he had given us to excel the beasts. But he was more inward to me than the most inward part of me and higher than my highest reach. And don't tell me the truth doesn't exist. Someone was killed. That is the truth. And you can't argue with that. No one can say what the truth is until a trial begins. A trial in which words will establish the truth. And the truth will be the one declared by the lawyer that uses the best words. Sophisms. Cicero, a lawyer who was far greater than we are, wrote in the Hortensius that only the truth can make men happy. And all men desire to be happy, thus truth must exist, or everything would be meaningless. Look, I told you that courage makes the difference between a great orator and an ordinary one. The courage to live without the truth. Do you have this courage? A messenger arrived from Tagaste. Your father is dying. Are you also taking this? Yes. I don't know how long I'll be away. That should be everything, then. Kalida. I came here with one trunk of this size. And now look at everything I can take with me. But there's only one thing I don't want to leave behind. Enough. That irritates me. Draw back those curtains. I'm not dead yet. Monica. been an awful man, haven't I? You've been. You still are. How oh, have you been able to stand by me all these years? I learned to forgive you. 
and love you for who you are. Well, I just now discovering the true meaning of love. I'm scared of what's to come. Shh. I don't want to be who I am anymore. I want to be baptized. already be dead. God, the Almighty Father. I do. And I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is Kalida, and she's a... A servant. One of your son's servants. No, a friend. A friend? That's right. From Carthage? Not from... exactly. She's from the south, from the great deserts. I see. I'll bring you some soup. How was your trip? Oh, not so bad. Your son slept the entire time. Travelling on wagons always has this effect on him. Really? I didn't know. Your brother and sister will arrive in a few days. Have you heard he got married? Yes, I heard. And I heard about Getulius. Everybody's talking about it. You and Macrobius had him acquitted, isn't that right? Yes. So, is he really guilty, like everyone says he is? Oh, that depends. If he can afford Macrobius again, he's innocent. What are you talking about? A man is either innocent or guilty. Trust me, Mother. A man is proven innocent or guilty by the words spoken in the tribunal. Words don't change facts. They don't? Then your magic formulas don't change them either. What magic formulas? The ones the bishop recited before my father. They don't change the facts either. What would you say the facts are? He has always been a scoundrel and a coward. He accepted to be baptized out of fear. The baptism will never change him. What do you know about it? What do you know about baptism? About your father? About our life here while you were away blabbing on presumptuously in the tribunals of Carthage. Spending your nights with this... Poor girl. 
whom you will eventually disappoint. What do you know about any of that? You're right. What do I know? After all, this isn't my home anymore. Let's go. Let's go. Augustine, what a pleasure to see you again. Good day, Romanianos. Good day. I've kept a close eye on your progress over the years. This is Kalida. A young woman whose beauty is worthy of your fame. I was wondering if you would let us stay here for a while. It's an honor for me to have the rising star of the Empire's tribunals here at my home. Sorry for your father's passing. Are you going back to work for Macrobius? No. I'm going back to work against people like Macrobius. I can no longer be his accomplice. We did some terrible things, Romanianus. It's not your fault. Not mine. Whose fault would it be then? No one's. No one's? What kind of philosophy is that? Have you ever heard of Mani? Mani is the prophet of the truth. And what would that be? That no one is responsible for anything. Remember, you are talking to a lawyer. I've defended guilty men who committed horrible crimes. That is exactly the point. Look at these olive trees. Can we reproach them for having twisted branches? No, it's their nature. It's the same for us. It's not our fault if we are made of matter, of evil. But then there's no hope. Only one. Follow Mani, who shows us how to free ourselves from matter, from evil, to become pure light, pure spirit. Thus I fell among men, delirious in their pride. Truth, truth, they repeated the word over and over to me. But the thing itself was not in them. O oh, truth, truth, how inwardly even then did the marrow of my soul sigh for the truth, while the others frequently sounded out its name, as if it were only a sound, clamor and wind. He's losing himself. He's living with a woman he can never marry. He's abandoned his career. And now he's even joined an esoteric cult. It's my fault. I shouldn't have sent him to Carthage. No, no. You did what you thought was best. But now I've lost him. God allows us to be lost. So only later we can be found. I did everything I could. I... Just pray. A son who elicits so much pain can never become lost. 
the flocks and herds and party-colored fowl which haunt the woods or swim the weedy pool. Concentrate. Go. Twas dead of night when, uh, when... When weary bodies close, Licentius. Twas dead of night when... Weary bodies close, their eyes in balmy, sleep and, uh, soft. And soft? Balmy sleep and soft. Dinner is ready. I prepared something special. Why? To please you. There's no need to. I believe there is. To remind you that you are too. What? Special. I know that. I don't need you to remind me. I don't need to prove anything to anyone. Forgive me. Never thank the servants or apologize to them. <laughs> I told you that the first time we met. You are no longer a servant to me. Not even your words can change that. Come on. And you need not reconcile with me, but with your mother. <sighs> Augustine. I was waiting for you. I'm glad to see you. How are you? Today I'm fine. Why today? I had a dream last night. I was standing on a suspended mast, crying. Then I saw a young man coming towards me. He smiles and says, why are you crying? For my son, I respond. He looks at me and tells me, look carefully. Can't you see he's standing where you are? I turn and I see you on the same mast next to me. One day we will be united in our faith. That's the meaning of my dream. That's why I'm fine today. So you'll become a Manichaean soon as well. No. That man didn't say you are standing where your son is. But your son is standing where you are. I'm good where I am. You're wasting the talent that God has given you. God has... God has nothing to do with it. I... I earned it through my own efforts. Man doesn't create himself, nor is he enough for himself. That's what you say. No, our hearts say so. Your priests make you believe so. Your priests make you believe that you need God. But where is God? You can't see him, you can't hear him. And so how about that? You're all forced to ask for help, and from whom? From them, from the priests, who hold your souls in the palms of their hands. No one here holds anyone's soul in the palm of their hands, young man. Did you hear? The bishop is afraid. Afraid that you'll begin using your heads. That you'll become aware of all the fables he's been telling you. Badly written fables, lacking any scientific basis. You see, what did I tell you? You have talent, but it's being wasted. We believe that it's time for you to become one of the elect. Me? Part of the elect? Yes. That way, you would be able to defend the religion of money publicly with your rhetorical skills. Publicly? Of course. You'll go back to demonstrating your worth. Someone like you can't be satisfied teaching grammar to children. And remember, we have clout. The world is made up of simple and superior people. You're one of the superior people. With us, you could do great things. 
I would be honored. You know there is one condition. The elector called to celibacy. You'll have to end your relationship with your companion. There is something I have to tell you. And I have something to tell you. Today... Today. <sighs> Who's first? You first. We're expecting a child. Are you pleased? Of course. How could I not be? And you? What did you want to tell me? Nothing important. Just that I found a complete translation of Isocrates' speeches. It's expensive. I wanted to talk to you about it, but now that we're expecting a child... ...we'd better save money. Are you sure? I'm sorry you won't no, be able no. to get it. Don't worry. A child is much more important. Kalida and I are expecting a child. Come in. I'd rather not stay at Romanianus's house. With Kalida in this condition, if, if we could stay with you, I... Uh, we would be most grateful. You needn't thank me, Augustine. I am your mother. Come, Kalida. I'll show you where you're going to be sleeping. Kalida, that your datos is crying. Maybe he just wants to be held by his father. Listen, I'm trying to concentrate. How's it coming? Worse than I thought. You're too hard on yourself. This book cannot fail like the first one did. Your book about beauty did not fail. It will soon be noticed. Yeah. Not even dedicating it to a famous orator like Jerius did any good. Give it time. Time? I'm 27. Cicero was a statesman at my age. And he had already written scripts that are still being studied today. And children? Did he have any? No. There you are. You instead already have a handsome child. Cicero had success, and I have a child. Augustine. There is someone here for you. Romanianus. 
What a pleasure to see you again. You look tired. Yes. Is this the baby? I've been artist. working a lot. May I? I have many ideas. And, uh... I came by to invite you to my house. No. To your house? No, 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 no. You're still a very welcome guest. Listen, I... I still feel bad about refusing your offer to become a part of the elect. Remember, no one is to blame for anything. An old friend of yours will be there. Augustine! Valerius! <laughs> What's an important man like yourself doing in Tagaste? I could ask the same of you. Please, make yourselves comfortable. So, where are you living now? Latakia? Tria? Aquileia? Rome. Oh. I'm working for Quintus Aurelius Simicus, the prefect. Have you heard of him? Who doesn't know the greatest orator of our time? In fact, you should hear him speak. How long will it take you to replace him? <laughs> Not long, if I wanted to, but I have another objective in mind. Valerius has a very important proposition for you, Augustine. In Milan, they're searching for a new court orator. The Emperor has asked Simicus to find him one, and he's been looking throughout the Empire, but it's not easy. Ambrose is in Milan, one of the most arrogant Christian bishops in the whole Empire. He's politically skilled and an effective orator. Simicus wants the new orator to oppose him. That's why I immediately thought of you. You're a brilliant orator, and they tell me you hate the Christians. It will be a great opportunity for you, Augustine, and for the entire Manichaean community, too. <laughs> Don't tell me I've come all this way for nothing. My family's here. An elderly mother and a slave as your concubine? Is that your family? I also have a child. And they're my whole life. That's not a life, Augustine. Remember all our dreams and ambitions? Hmm? You're just scared, that's all. Of not being able to live up to your potential. The first time I saw you, I wondered what Romanianus wanted to press out of you. The oil press can crush. But if the olive doesn't enter the press, you never know if it's of superior, superior quality. quality. Or merely sludge. It's our last chance. God dealt with me so that I was enticed to go to Rome, using as his means men enchanted with this death in life. And I, who hated actual misery and the one place sought fictitious happiness in the other. Augustine! Augustine, where are you going? To Carthage. To Carthage? Yes, I'm accompanying Valerius. He's sailing back to Rome. What did you think? I'll just leave without saying anything? Should I have? What's gotten into you? Come on, go back to bed. I need to go. Valerius is waiting for me. Have a nice trip. <sighs> I'll be back in a couple of days. to my mother, that mother, and fled.
The wind blew and filled our sails, and the shore dropped out of sight that morning when, wild with grief, she was there filling God's ears with complaints and groans. She did not know what joy God was preparing for her through my going away. And so, after accusing me of perfidy and cruelty, she still continued to pray to God for me. Why? Why? Padre nostro che sei in cielo, si è santificato il tuo nome, venga il tuo regno. He told me that it would have been too painful, that he wouldn't have had the strength to face you and say goodbye to, to you, to a dead artist. He wouldn't have found the courage to leave. Here, sit. But he promised that he will return, or else he will make arrangements for us to join him. She returned to her everyday life. I went on to Rome. Now the glory of Rome seems to be darkened by the growing popularity of Christianity amongst other religions. But they are just like the storm clouds that can at one moment hide the sun but will also be dissipated by its heat. Not a bad speech, Augustine. It's a shame about your slight African accent. You should try and correct it. Thank you for your advice. Noble Somacus. You may go. Yes. Valerius, stay. So? Pack your bags, we're going to Milan. No. No. <laughs> You're the new court orator. The whole reason they decided to live here in Milan instead of Rome makes you understand just how shallow the last emperors were. They were soldier emperors who chose Milan because it's closer to the barbarian borders. Precisely. Here it is. The Empress Palace. Did you ever think you'd get this far? Repeat what I told you. Never look the emperor in the eyes, never contradict his mother, and never trust anybody in the court. Aurelius Augustine and Valerius Prisco. Hmm? Uh, Quintus, I need a word with you. Oh, and throw some compliments around for Bautoni. He hasn't led an army in years, but he still likes to be considered a great general. Is there someone I can praise for who he is? Yes. Her. Blazilla. Blazilla? Valerius, you finally returned. How could I have endured much longer without seeing you? Didn't you bring me anything from Africa? The best voice in the Empire, a future star of the court. Augustine. I hope soon I will have the opportunity to hear your voice. And I the opportunity to prove I am worthy of the presentation Valerius has bestowed upon me. Blessilla. Except for power. Nothing could be more desired within the court. The Emperor Valentinian! Listen. When the 
never have another chance like this again. The Emperor has just been sworn in. The stakes for all the most important positions are still open. With you as orator and my experience, we can reach the greatest heights. Are you with me? I call the Consul of Venice, Quinto Flavio. Later. Valerius. Are you here with the new court orator? Yes, Empress Mother. Aurelius Augustine from Tagaste. Does this Augustine from Tagaste know what it means to be the voice of the Emperor? Yes, Empress Mother. Does he know that his voice will be heard and respected by all the Emperor's subjects? More importantly, he knows which voice your subjects must not listen to. The voice of Bishop Ambrose, who presumes to be better heard than our Emperor. However, if you want the Emperor to be heard over Bishop Ambrose, you will need a more skillful orator than him. <clears throat> I don't know anything about these things. What's the plan? Augustine will make a public speech in honor of the Emperor, but most of all, it will be an attack on Ambrose. A speech that will bring public opinion on our side. Soon, no one will listen to his voice. And you? What do you have to say? Let us hear your voice. My voice is at the service of the Emperor. I shall say whatever it is the Emperor wishes to hear. The Queen really liked you. Of course she did. She's a woman. <laughs> She's convinced that with your help, she can get rid of Bishop Ambrose. Listen, how did the Bishop become such a threat to her? Justina's husband, the previous Emperor, had a great deal of esteem for the Bishop. He gave him so much power that even the court is in his shadow now. Wonderful fruit for don't you want to buy some? Look over there. Catholics. Even pagans go to listen to Ambrose. As I told you, he's a great orator. We'll see. Oh, come on! Move! Stop struggling! Move! Oh, no! Please! Please, I'm moving! The worst for you! Let me go! Oh, 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 You'll often see scenes like that. They are Justinia's Imperial Guard. Observing the Emperor. I'm searching for ideas to use in the speech to be made in his honor. You should probably just be creative. Creativity is just another name for lies. Yes. Lies do have many names. Falsehood, invention, fable. That's why they are so much fun. And often disappointing. That's why we need artists like yourself. make a speech in my honor. I just love it when people let their imagination about me run wild. We can do something about that. You can't enter! Bishop Ambrose, we don't remember inviting you. I'm here to talk to you about something more important than a simple invitation. And what would that be? Justice. <sighs> I know a man, a devoted husband, father of three children. I remember when his wife 
gave birth to their first son. This man was at the front fighting for Rome. I remember when his second son died from a fever. This man was at the front fighting for Rome. I remember when this man said goodbye to his eldest son who went off and died for Rome. Today, this man is in jail. Yesterday, your guards arrested him for unpaid debts, and tomorrow they will sell him as a slave. It's the law. Debts must be paid. That's why I'm here. Because Rome has a debt to pay this man. A debt that can be paid by giving him his freedom. Find me a solution and quickly. I know this man. I will look into his case. General Bartoni, I'm grateful for your intervention. Forgive me for disturbing you. Empress Mother. Emperor. And since you're here, Bishop Ambrose, I would like to introduce you to Aurelius Augustine, the court orator. I've heard much about you. And I about you. I heard you are a follower of Mani. That's right. So, I have here a Manichaean, two Aryan Christians, a traditional pagan, and a follower of Mithra. It makes you wonder where the truth lies. Or if a man can ever find it. No, Augustine. No. Man doesn't find the truth. Man must let the truth find him. See, Pisidius, I already went to Rome once, and I risked losing myself. Do I need to do the same thing now? But now it's the Pope who's ordered you to go. To save you. To save me, and allow my people to die. You know, yesterday I watched the storks migrate. I envied them. There was no when to leave and which direction to go. Yet for us, it's so hard to understand what God wants us to do. Governor. Thank you for coming, Centurion. I've spoken with the city's garrison officers. They are ready to be put under your command. I'm honored, but I do believe that they know how to defend Hippo better than I. Perhaps. But who's talking about defending? I am talking about attacking. With you in charge, our soldiers will be able to end the siege and free Hippo. There are tens of thousands of Vandals. Numbers don't matter. Rome has always defeated larger armies. Now that the Vandals think we're about to give in, a victory on our part would turn things around. I'm the governor of the entire province. I could be in Carthage right now, safe. Instead, I came here just before the Vandals did. And do you know why? Because I've always been convinced that our counterattack would start from Hippo. We'll send those barbarians right back where they came from. We'll save the Empire. Think of all the honors that will be bestowed upon you. Or all the men we will lose. No. Think of the civilians that will be saved by your sword. How is he? He made it through the night. With God's help, he'll get through another. Not with God's, but yours. I only tried not to cause him too much harm. How many of them will be able to fight? Fight? Then why didn't you just leave them to die? You're right. Maybe it would have been better. 
I see you don't have your sword with you today. A soldier isn't always a battle. Then don't bring these men into battle. Let them live. The question is this. Must I let my men live and let the city die? Or let them die to let the city live? There are 12 groups of us here in Hippo. About 150 men per group. 1,800 soldiers in all. 2,000 with my men. Still not enough. What about the citizens that could fight? Well, I'd say at least 5,000. Hmm. Enlist them. We need more men on this side. Here, here, and here. Go. Where did they all go? When they heard their captain was preparing an attack, they went to join him. Those uh, over there. Those there. All right. The Vandal siege line is arranged like this. And we'll attack their weakest point. Here. But it's the furthest point. Precisely. Where they won't expect to be attacked. That's the best place for us to catch them off guard. From the besieged to the besiegers. Centurion, I must speak to you. Give me back those wounded men. They are my responsibility. They've gone back into service of their own free will. Then order them back to the Basilica. You'll offend them. The truth is you like having their lives at your disposal. They have the right to become heroes. No, no, no. I told you to fix the lock first, OK? Or do you want to take that away as well? You Christians and your slave mentality, so submissive, pessimistic. Oh, we have a slave mentality. Look who's talking. So attached to the things of this world that you, you adore them as if they were gods. The world? You don't even know the world. Always hanging on your bishop's vestments. There's much more life hanging onto our bishop's vestments than in any place you've been. Life? That's what you call life? Of course that's life. You don't know what life is. You've never seen the sun that sets over the battlefield. You've never drunk water from the spring in the middle of the desert. You've never bitten into a piece of fresh fruit after having spent weeks at sea. You have... ships have arrived. We need to get your books on board and leave immediately. And where will we go? Away from here, to safety in Rome. I'm not talking about the boat's destination, but rather our destiny. Where will we go? Where will I go? If I abandon the city, God has entrusted to me. Centurion! 
Since when does your father sell swords? No, Bishop Augustine. He's not selling it. It's a gift. Go then, but be careful. Don't cut yourself with that. Centurion! My father has made another one! Ah, I'll be sure to give it to somebody who can use it. Massimo, wait. Do you see that girl? With her back to us and the long brown hair. Take this to... Yes, take this to her and tell her that I'm sorry for the things I said the other day. This is for you. Where did you get this? Fabius the Centurion. And he said that he's sorry okay. for what he said to you. You have it. All of it? Yes, all of it. Again. Halt. Attack! I was looking for you. We started packing your books onto the Pope's ships. I have to talk to the governor first. You're still hoping to prevent that attack? Keeping a hope alive is a bishop's duty. Uncle, the barbarians could attack the city at any moment. As soon as we can, we'll leave. How many times do I have to tell you? Go! I think this must be the weakest point. Here. Valerius, suspend the enrollment of the civilians. It was Fabius the Centurion's initiative, not mine. If you care about the future of the city, suspend it. I do care. That's why I won't suspend it. Those men are being led to a massacre. No! They are being led to glory. There is more glory in fighting for peace than waging war. War made Rome great. Not war. Virtue. The virtue of the regulars, the serverless, the Scipios. Exactly. So why do you Christians want to change everything? Not change. Renew. Preserve what is good and convey it to the new citizens. Hmm. Rome to the barbarians. Barbarians is what we call those we don't know. No. It's what we call those we know well enough to realize they'll never be like us. And what's so special about us? We are a wall, defending our city. On this side, there's order, security, and law. On the other side, there's chaos and lawlessness. This is a century-old wall, which mustn't be destroyed. All walls are destroyed sooner or later. Not those built by Romans. What do you want to do, Valerius? Defeat the Vandals and present yourself as the savior of the Empire, the new consul? Maybe I'd already be the consul if it hadn't been for you. You cannot fault me for denouncing evil. Evil? Is that what you call our friendship? Look at us. I'm just the governor of a small province now. And you, a simple bishop. If it weren't for you, we could have had a much greater future. Remember when we left here to go to Milan? Milan. The Emperor's Sea. Now your speech against Ambrose is even more urgent. I'll lock myself in my house and not think of another thing. I don't think that'll be possible. Why? I think you'll have company. Kalida. Mother. I have just moved in, so I'll have to reorganize. I'm sure we'll manage somehow. Go on, go. Come in, hurry, hurry. Go on, come on, upstairs, upstairs. Mother. 
You can sleep down here, in that room. In that room. We'll be upstairs with the Deodatus. I'll show you where, where you can put your things. Um, we'll have to buy you some new clothes. Beautiful ones. So you can come to court. I'm giving a speech in front of the Emperor. I'm sorry. He's tired. He needs to sleep. I'm sorry. Take him. I'm just going to clean this mess up. Hey, hey. Uh, Kalida, worry about that later. Worry about that later. I think it's better if you take him. If you take him. Go, go, upstairs. You'll get used to your family again. You lied to me. I felt ashamed. Of what? Of your family? Of myself. I'm here thanks to the Manichaeans. I feared you weren't proud of me. Are you proud of yourself? Of course. What more could I have hoped for? Have you met Bishop Ambrose? Yes. Do you know him? Thank you. Second to Pope Sorricius, he's the most listened to bishop in the world. Why is that? Until ten years ago, he hadn't even been baptized. But he had already got ahead in life. At only 30 years old, he was the governor of the whole province. He was so loved that when the bishop died, the people asked him to take his place. And he accepted? Of course. He gave everything he had to the poor. And he gained a new life. If you say so. Not me. The Holy Scriptures say so. Yes, they are holy. But when you read them, they say that God created man in his own image and likeness. Can you imagine a God that looks like me? Two arms, two legs, having a shave every morning? <laughs> he certainly wouldn't talk as much as you. Have you heard yourself, Augustine? You can't even think about God without projecting yourself into the matter. Go to Kalida now. She suffered a great deal because of you. should have. Yes. You should have. 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 Sisters, the letter 
killed, but the spirit is life. Paul's words have two meanings. The first is that the Bible is not to be understood in the literal sense. God created man in his own image and likeness. Doesn't mean, for example, that God resembles man in the material sense. Our spiritual life, our capacity to love, our freedom, this, this is what makes man resemble God. But Paul's words have a second meaning as well. Think of mountain rivers. When they meet an obstacle, they become stronger. They sweep it away and precipitate even more violently. The same thing happens with our desires. When they are obstructed by laws, they become even stronger and precipitate towards evil, towards death. Even in this sense, the letter, or rather the law, kills. But God has also given us his spirit, and the spirit gives life. The spirit guides our desires. It makes us love good. It makes us free. I need to speak with Bishop Ambrose, and you are coming with me. Let me through. Let me through. Let me through. I need to speak to the bishop. So do we. I'm the orator of the court. Yeah, sure. And I'm the king of Persia. Augustine, please. Bishop Ambrose. What an honor. My mother, Monica, she really has insisted upon meeting you. It's a pleasure to meet the new orator's mother. Are you a Catholic, my child? Yes. This time, we outnumber you. Are you preparing another sermon? Oh, no. No, it's the philosopher Plotinus. Plotinus? But he's not a Christian. No, but he's a great philosopher. There's a lot of truth in his work. And as the gospel says, who isn't against us is with us. So anybody against you would be against the truth. Who is against the truth is against himself. So this is the reason why you gave up the governor's office. My reasons are not as visible, nor as apparent as one may think. They're not visible. Ah, like the spirit thing you talked about in your sermon. It's in Paul's scriptures that talk about it. I only gave my comments on his words. Invisible. But giving life at the same time. You are an intelligent man, Ambrose. Don't you find it all hard to believe? 
Is the love you have for your woman visible? I would argue that it isn't. Yet, you managed to create a new life from it. Something very tangible. I see you've made inquiries about me. Isn't it what you are doing right now? You deserve your notoriety. And I'm sure in your speech to the Emperor, you'll go a long way towards establishing yours. At first glance, we all seem quite alike. One head, two arms, two legs. Of course, speaking of legs, one might prefer the graceful legs of Blazilla over those of the courageous Pautone. <laughs> but there is someone among us, someone above us, someone who resembles us in the same way a diamond resembles a stone, an eagle resembles a butterfly, a star resembles the flame of a candle. Our Emperor Valentinian. We owe the peace of the kingdom to him, the prosperity of the fields, the good fortune of the heavens. To him, and not to a bishop who claims for himself the power as bestowed upon the emperor and only the emperor. To the emperor and not the bishop. He's referring to Ambrose. Bestowed by God to act as a mediator Clever between as the always, earth General. and the heavens. To, establish to act as a mediator between the earth and the heavens. To establish what is good and what is evil. To leave his people to salvation. Thus the emperor and not the bishop shall hear our prayers. Our petitions, our invocations. He is our faith, our comfort, our hope. The fields, houses, also the churches are his. If the emperor decides to requisition them, no one can oppose him, not even Bishop Ambrose. Because whoever isn't with us is against us. Me, you, all of us, we belong to him. Son's speech yesterday was quite successful. I'm so ashamed. It's not your fault. I should have been a better mother. Is there a better mother than God? And yet, how many of his children repudiate him? But don't lose hope. If Augustine had been an easy child, God wouldn't have given him a mother like yourself. Ah, here she is now. We were just talking about the day. We didn't think you were coming. You would say that. Haven't you already had one of those? No. That was ages ago. Adeo Datos. Adeo Datos. Adeo. Adeodatus. Where is he? Adeodatus. There, there. No, no, no. Come on. Hey. <laughs> Augustine, I have great news. Come on. Guess what the Emperor has asked me. For a rocking horse? This is not the time for sarcasm. The Empress Mother has taken the words from your speech literally. She's asked us to requisition Ambrose's Basilica. You and I. Not Bautonio, one of the other officials. 
What did I tell you? We are becoming increasingly more influential. Great. But we still have to see if Ambrose will obey us. You are the Emperor's voice, and the Emperor is, remember your speech, right? The mediator between the Earth and the heavens? You convinced everyone of this. How could Ambrose possibly stand in opposition to one of the Emperor's orders? Hmm? Tonight we celebrate. Oh. Here's to us. By the way, the Manichaeans of Milan have asked me to invite you to one of their rites tomorrow night. I want nothing more to do with them. You've been a Manichaean for years. What happened? Years of obscurity. I only needed to read Plotinus to realize that. Is he a Christian philosopher? No. <laughs> Just a great philosopher. Augustine. The Manichaeans are powerful. Your presence here today is in part due to them. Even if you don't want to be one of them anymore, pretend. Pretend? Pretend that Valentinian is a great emperor. That Bautoni is, is a soldier. That I am a Manichaean. We can pretend everything we want, Valerius, but not everything can be pretended. Tired of the party? I'm tired of this palace. Sometimes I just want to be alone. It's strange to think of someone like you alone. You think so? Where's your wife? <laughs> I'm not married. For a man of your position, that sounds strange to me. So what do you do when you get tired of this palace? I go away, at least for a while. Where to? A secret place. So don't say anything more, then. Or it will not be a secret anymore. I won't tell you where it is. Just what it's like. It's a villa in the woods, in front of a very special little lake. It's a natural spring-fed lake, and the water is hot, always hot. Close your eyes. Imagine how it is in the winter to take a dip at night and snow all around you. I've never seen snow before. You should come. But it's your secret place. You're good with words. Maybe one day you'll convince me to reveal it to you. Augustine. Bishop. You made good use of my words in your diatribe against me in court. They've been useful to know you and Plotinus better. Good. But be aware that Plotinus offers us everything but the essential. That the truth is not an idea, a concept, or a state of mind, but is manifest in one divine person. We're here on behalf of Emperor Valentinian. Very well. And I'm here on behalf of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. <laughs> the Emperor demands that you surrender this basilica to the Aryan community. Demands? Demands. In the name of what authority? The authority bestowed upon him. By who? By God. Liars! How dare you? How dare you name God as your authority? You don't believe in him! You don't believe in anything! And you 
Worse, invoking the return of the pagan demons. Dogs on a leash, that's what you are! You wander around barking out lies, be silent! And look deep within yourselves for what the truth really is. Only the truth will turn you into men. Free men! We'll be forced to report your conduct to the Emperor. Tell them, if they want to get rid of me, they must attack me, not my people. Let's go. Augustine? Remember what I said. It's not the man that finds the truth, but the truth that finds the man. Because the truth is a person. It's Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Now, what will we tell the Empress Mother to use force? To send Bertani and his soldiers to take Ambrose's Basilica. The people will not be pleased. They'll all side with Ambrose again. No. Because you, with your words, you will make the people pleased. And you will keep them all on our side. Everything is at stake here, Augustine. Are you with me? See how the mosaic is put together. Little by little, it appears. But only by the end, when every piece has found its place, will we be able to see the full picture. I'm leaving you in the best hands. <laughs> I'm sure you both have a lot to talk about. Look, Adiodatus, there's your father. Augustine, I'd like to invite you to my villa. I would be honored to come. Believe me, I know. You have a great future ahead of you. Soon your voice will be the most important in the whole court. That depends on various circumstances. That's right. On one in particular, that you still need to obtain a family rich enough to sustain your ambitions. A family like yours? And you must know that I also have a daughter. In two years' time, she'll be of marrying age. Uniting you in marriage will be a good solution for me as much as for you. That is, if you want your voice to be the most important in court. Wait. Remember the first time I took off your sandals? You've come a long way since then. We've both come a long way. And you have a long road still to travel? Yes. I was waiting for you with Adiodatus outside the Imperial Palace today. Really? I saw you walk out and was about to go over to you. But then an elegant man stopped you. I walked away. You walked away? Yes. Why? I didn't want to be a bother to you. I didn't want to get in your way. But I've never considered you a bother. I never want to be a bother to you.
for you to grow up. before I could obtain the bride I sought. And so, I procured another mistress, not as a wife, of course, but so the disease of my soul might be nursed up and kept in its vigor. Wasted any time. Watch carefully. You'll have to talk about this in your speech. In the name of your Emperor Valentinian, I order you to move out immediately. The Basilica will be requisitioned before daybreak. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. God doesn't ask the Emperor for his palace. And the Emperor mustn't ask God for his home. If there is a God, Bishop Ambrose, he resides in the palace of the Emperor, not in your basilica. There is a God, Valerius, and he has to reside in the hearts of all men, even in yours. No opposition shall be tolerated. Whatever happens will be because you wanted it to. Whatever happens, Valerius, is because God wanted it to happen. Attack, General. Against unarmed civilians? Yes, unarmed. 
Will you be the one to tell the Empress Mother that they blocked your soldiers? information for my speech. Good. You will need all your talent tomorrow. Mother. Mother! I'm here. Water! Water! Bring some water! Everyone loves peace. No one loves war. But there is no peace without war. If we want secure borders, then we have to use strength. If we want a safe city, then we have to be firm. If we want to keep our wealth, then we have to use force. That's why an emperor has to be ready to use force. Yes, violence isn't beautiful. Neither is it beautiful to exert. But someone has to take on this burden. Someone like General Bautone. Someone who has been able to protect us against our ferocious Goths, and fanatical Catholics. Thus he deserves our gratitude for having defended us against our external and internal enemies, for having bestowed honor upon Rome. for having killed many innocent people.
You aren't hungry. Why won't you look at me? Would you like your son? No. You are here. What do you want from me? For you to be happy. I'm not happy. Right? I'm not happy. And I don't want you here. You can chase me away. But you cannot chase yourself away. Remember who you are. as well. Think of mountain rivers. When they meet an obstacle, they become stronger. <laughs> it's not our fault if we are made of matter, of evil. We are not ordinary people, and we don't need the truth. We are becoming increasingly more influential. Let us hear your voice. Oh! You don't believe in anything! <laughs> We're expecting a child. I never want to be a bother to you. <laughs> The truth is not an idea, a concept, or a state of mind. The courage to live without the truth. Do you have this courage? Man doesn't find the truth. Man must let the truth find him. And I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Words are not enough to change a man. That's a fact. And not only words. The truth is a person. It's Jesus Christ, the Son of God.
epistles of St. Paul the Apostle. Not in rioting and not in drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provisions for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. Today, for the first time, listened. I listened to him.
Belatedly I loved thee, O beauty so ancient and so new. Belatedly I loved thee. Thou didst cry aloud and force open my deafness. Thou didst shine and chase away my blindness. Thou didst breathe fragrant odors, and I drew in my breath. And now I pant for thee. Amen. I tasted, and now I hunger and thirst. Thou didst touch me, and I burned for thy peace. You have humiliated yourself. You have humiliated the Emperor, my son. You have humiliated the whole Empire. You are dismissed as court orator to the Emperor. You are no longer the Emperor's voice. Nobody will ever listen to your voice. Valerius. betrayed our trust. You made us look foolish in front of the whole empire. We will not tolerate being made to look ridiculous. You're no longer welcome here. Go back to where you came from. They didn't succeed in requisitioning the Basilica. Your conversion has given courage to the people who now fill it. The Empress couldn't kill us all. And now, what are you going to do? I'm going to Ostia with my mother and my son. From there, we'll embark on a ship for Africa to go home. And once you've arrived? I want to study and pray, live in seclusion. It won't be easy for you to live in seclusion. I speak from experience. I don't feel worthy of priesthood. He'll ask more of you than that. Here. It's ink. Remember to use it all. I've spoken with the captain. We set sail in three days. I always wish to be buried in my homeland, in Africa. It's not the time to be thinking about that, Mother. But you know it doesn't matter anymore. You can bury me anywhere, even here. There was only one thing. I've ever desired. I ever lived for. To see you baptized before I died. Give me your hand. There's no need. Don't be afraid. Listen to the silence. Our life 
was just a shell. Fragile, temporary. But there is something that lives within us that is not fragile. It's not temporary. We are already living an eternal life, my son. The seal will tell you where to go. Yes. These are the last trunks of books. Only the manuscripts of the City of God are missing, mm. then everything will have been loaded on the Pope ships. Mm. I've almost finished it, Persidious. Just let me work on it a bit more. A bit more. Out through the side door. Lucille. What do you want? To conscript me as well? No, no. Only to look at you. There, now you have. Tonight we attack. Just what Rome needs. More dead heroes to worship. Yes, I will fight for Rome. But I will live for you. Because you give me the desire to live. There are some more in the library. Fetch them. My uncle, excuse me. We're about half Bishop Augustine is your uncle. Yes. Yes. My father's brother. Uh. Fabius! Fabius, I understand your resentment towards me, but listen, don't sacrifice your life, nor that of your men, to defend an empire in decline. I'm Roman, an officer of the empire, and this is what I will be until the very end. Man is what he loves. If you love the earth, you will be of the earth. If you love God, you will be of God. As the scriptures say, we are all gods and children of God. <laughs> I'm not a child of any God. <laughs> I'm the son of a man who died when I was just a child. Do you know, Lucille, who killed my father? It was your uncle. The great Bishop Augustine. Do you remember? Yes, I remember. I remember every detail. Ambrose was right. I became a priest, but God wanted more from me. By then, I'd been a bishop for a few years. Now that the Confessions is finished, what will you dictate in this room? I have a few ideas in mind, but only one in particular is urgent. A book to defend the church from the accusation that it's leading the empire to ruin. In fact, since Rome was sacked by Alaric, the church has been blamed for everything. Instead, the church will be the one to hold on to the traditions of Rome. In these uncertain times that are in store for us. Have you chosen the title? The City of God. Bishop, something terrible. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, God. It's Father Fabulous. 
His hands have been cut off. Why? And his tongue has been cut out. The Donatists have done this. The fanatic Donatists. There is a difference. I know the difference. But when word of the murder gets out, people won't make such a subtle distinction. We could risk the breakout of civil war between the Catholics and the Donatists. No. What are you going to do? A council? Yes. You are the Bishop of the Donatists and I of the Catholics. Let's bring our priests together for a public debate in Carthage until we establish who's right and where the truth stands. The truth? The truth. And when we have established the truth? If the truth lies with the Donatists, then we will become Donatist. If it lies with the Catholics, then you will become Catholic. <laughs> we all want peace, but there's no real peace without the truth. Let's find it together. That would be an unfair dispute. No one can beat an orator like you. I won't be participating in the debate. You won't be participating? I'm only concerned about one thing, Sidonius. The truth. If by any chance the Catholics should, should win the debate, I wouldn't want anyone to suspect that it was all due to the skill of rhetoric instead of the truth of the arguments. One condition. The judge has to be neutral and above suspicion. We will select him together. Mm. Oh. Domitius. We come to Carthage because you are the most esteemed judge in the province. I usually judge criminal matters, not religious ones. I'm not even Christian. It's not different. You just need to judge the truth. You must have a lot of faith in yourselves to put everything at stake in a public debate. Not in ourselves. In the truth. Many people have already died in this conflict. And that's why we need you. Fabius. Mm. Mm. My son, Fabius. He has the same eyes my son used to have. Well, he's upset. Because I promised to spend the day with him. My fault, Fabius. My fault. I took your father away from you today. <laughs> <laughs> Are you really sure you don't want to speak today? You'll do fine. I'd prefer to listen to you. You know, Persidious, it was in this tribunal where everything began for me. Let's hope that this is not where everything ends for you. express a judgment on your debate. I will listen carefully to both sides. I will judge with impartiality and trust that the truth we discover today will help you to unite. I officially open this debate and invite Donatus Bishop Sidonius to speak first. Illustrious judge, today I speak before you gentlemen, ladies, and our God. I could talk about religion, sin, betraying the scriptures, or the fractured history with our Catholic brothers, but today I want to speak of only one man, a priest 
who has been the greatest sinner of us all. Bishop Augustine. <laughs> It's time we pull back the veils that have hidden the truth of your beloved bishop. A man who was driven to represent murderers and individuals with the most base morals. He was a slave to an ambition that pushed him to seek success through the skill of his rhetoric. A man of God, consumed by lust, avarice, and ego. A narcissism that drove him to worship no greater God than himself. This debate was to be about truth. But that truth has been eclipsed by one man. There is no greater sinner than Augustine. The fact that he became a priest is proof that Catholics cannot be trusted. I'd chosen not to participate. Yet from the moment I became the topic of discussion, it's my duty to speak. Sidonius is right. Ambitious, lustful, narcissistic. I was all of these things. God gave me a mother. She showed me that nothing in this material world is worthy of our ambition. God gave me a woman. She showed me that loving means renouncing oneself. God gave me a son. I started to believe that he was created in my image. Then God took him away from me to show me he was created in his image. Ambitious, lustful, narcissistic. Because I was all these things, and still am, as we all are. As we all are. But not one of us is alone, ever. Not even when we're in desperation, bitterness, darkness. God is close to us. God is more brother than any brother. He's more friend than any friend. More lover than any lover. Victory to the Donatists, or the next one will pierce your heart. Aren't you coming to bed? I'll be right there. You haven't made your decision yet. I'm still thinking it over. Mm. Go on, Fabius. Say good night to your father. Good night, father. Mm. Good night, my little one. Come on. 
Run. I wish Augustine hadn't dragged you into this whole matter. I must only determine the truth. I'm a judge, it's my duty. But you're also a father. And a husband. Don't forget that. You asked me to give a verdict on your debate. Well then, when a judge pronounces his opinion, he also expresses a judgment of himself. Good judgment if he was just in his decision. Bad judgment if his decision was warped. And thus, with great interest in the name of the authority bestowed upon me, the victory of the debate goes to the Catholic orators. The doctrine they uphold is the truth. Augustine. Raise your guard. Raise your guard. And lunge. Excellent. One day, you'll have to defend your family, along with the whole of Rome and the Empire. Where will you be? Well, I'll get old eventually. Years have gone by, but I still don't understand you or oh, my father. Your father died to defend the truth, as you are ready to die to defend the Empire. But the Empire will come to an end. The truth your father died for won't. No. My father died for nothing. And if the Empire comes to an end, You Christians will be to blame, because you betrayed it.
They're coming. Fabius doesn't need to attack after all. We'll wait for the fleet to arrive from Rome. I'll go and tell him. Wait. If Fabius is successful, it will be my success. If he fails, the fleet will arrive and will resolve everything, proving to everyone that I was right. And Bishop Augustine was wrong. Exactly. of the sea, the depths of the heart of man bursts forth storms, wars, and you seem to be overcome by slumber, like the day on Lake Tiberiad, when you were in the boat with your apostles. Then I, as they did, must cry out, Master, Master, we are about to die. Do you not care? Wake up, Master. Calm the winds like on that day. Come on, move! The hearts of men. And ask us like you did on that day. Why are you so afraid? Have ye no faith? a battle, not a war. People have lost their heads, not just a battle. Well, let's try not to lose ours as well. Trust me. She's been kneeling there since last night. Embark on the ships the Pope has sent, and take her with you. There is no hope left for this city. If I don't return, you take charge of Hippo. My name is Augustine, the Bishop of Hippo. I would like to speak to your leader, Geyseric. Troops will attack from the west side. Ah, <laughs> the famous bishop. They must be really desperate in Hippo if they decided to risk the life of their most illustrious citizen. What have you come to ask me? Nothing. 
I've come only to make you an offer. <laughs> and what could that possibly be? The chance to become a great king. I am already king. A king of a great empire. No. You're just a bandit of a small gang. You only fight to increase your wealth. What is that if not banditry? Without laws or unifying the people, all you rule over is a string of conquered villages. To become a great king, it takes more than being able to, to plunder and pillage. It, it takes a vision, benevolence, a firm hand that can build as well as destroy. What do you want your legacy to be? That of a king or that of a bandit? Do the right thing. Free the prisoners and take me instead. Today I'm happy I didn't die for Rome. Guys, Eric has proposed a peace agreement. All citizens will be spared if we lay down our arms and open the city gates. This will be the beginning of a new era for Hippo. It will be completely different from now. Yes, but we should not fear. We should not fear our next of kin. And today the Vandals are the next of kin that God has sent us. We don't know them, you say. They are men, I tell you. They are different from us, you say. No more different than any other men, I tell you. They are our enemies, you say. They will become our friends, I tell you. What will be left of Hippo if it falls into the hands of the Vandals? A city is its citizens, Governor. Not its walls. Walls are important, Bishop. To open the doors of Hippo means to lose everything. Homes, possessions, power. Yes, everything. But that's a reasonable price for life. What kind of life would that be? It would be life. Certainly richer than if we remain attached to our possessions. I have a better proposal. I have received a message from the Emperor. The Imperial fleet will arrive tonight. Geyseric's fleet will be destroyed. His army will be lost and Hippo shall be freed. You've already tried relying on your own strength instead of God's once. Remember what happened. We have the Imperial fleet. What do we need your God for?
if you have come to this decision, then you no longer need me. This is the decision we have made. Tomorrow at dawn, the ships the Pope has sent will leave. Whoever wants to embark is more than welcome. Whoever doesn't stay and fight will lose all their possessions. freed by the Imperial fleet. I don't need that type of freedom anymore. You've already freed me today. No. The Lord has freed you. I didn't even know you were still alive. I'm not talking about freedom from Geyseric. I'm talking about the freedom from the old room. You've made me believe that there can be a new Rome, one not built on fear or powerful weapons or past glories. We need a city founded on hope, faith, and even a love for our enemies. It has to be a city of... A city of God. <sighs> then, maybe one day I'll... I'll thank him too. I remember my father on his deathbed. Asking you to tell him about that city. Well, today I understand why. There's one more thing I want to ask you, Bishop. ahead of us, but you will be a light in the darkness, a light of love. That's why I tell you, if you keep silent, keep silent with love. If you speak out, speak out with love. If you discipline, discipline with love. If you forgive, forgive with love. Let love take root within you. For only goodness can arise from this origin. Love. And do as you wish. I stand here today in honor of your father. That one too. All, all of them. Why, why have you ordered the books to be unloaded? The ship must be able to save as many people as possible. Including you! I cannot leave, Lucille. I'm the bishop of this city. But they have spurned you. Betrayed you. And how many times have I betrayed the Lord? And still he continues to love me. And I must be a testimony of this love? Fabius, go and board the ship before it's too late. Yeah. <laughs> 
and take care of her. So, so, come Burning ships on the horizon! Burning ships! Vandal ships or Roman ships? It's impossible to say right Vandal now. ships or Roman ships! It's impossible to say right now, Master. We must wait for daybreak. Love endures in adversity. It shows prudence in prosperity. It is strong in suffering. It rejoices in good deeds. It is safe from temptation. It is generous in hospitality, cheerful among true brothers, patient with the faithless. It is the spirit of holy books, the virtue of prophecy, the salvation of the mysteries, it is the strength of knowledge, the bounty of faith. It is wealth for the poor, life for the dying. Love is everything.
judgment is finished, this heaven and earth shall cease to be, and there will be a new heaven and a new earth. For this world shall pass away by transmutation, not by absolute destruction. And therefore, St. Paul says, for the figure of this world passes away, I would have you be without anxiety. <laughs>